Welcome everybody to another trading video. I'm your market analyst Adam Carberg and today we're going to be looking at how you can optimize your trading strategies and your technical analysis by implementing the understanding of relative volume. So what we'll do is we'll start at the beginning and understand well, what actually is volume and how does it look on a chart. So we're going to move over to the price chart of the candlestick price chart of Apple and we're just going to make it full size. Now we're not going to look at any of the actual pricing. All that we're going to be having looking at are these little bars at the bottom, and these are what we call volume bars. So each bar, as if you um, represents the amount of volume of the asset that's been traded in that time frame. So in this case, we're looking at a week's time chart, but if we were to change that to a day, um, each bar would represent one day, and each one of these not only um, has a visual representation of how much volume has been traded. But if you hover over it, you can actually see how much um, of the volume we have there. So as you can see, we've got, 100, we've got 162 million um, share units traded on this day. And our moving average um, that we've got here is 82 million. So we're almost double the moving average um, for this day sold. And as we can see, it closed in the red. Therefore, it's a red can, uh, a red bar at the bottom. So that's just a little bit of basics about how to actually read these volume bars at the bottom. And they can be very useful um, in showing us the level of interest that's occurring within a stock. So understanding that this shows us the amount of volume traded and whether it's green or red is really important. The next step is seeing what the general average is over a period of time. So as we move back to the weekly chart, um, we can see a rough trend of what's been going on. However, to understand what relative volume means is when we see a spike of volume relative to the average, so here we can see a big clump. Um, this was about a month or two months. We can see a spike here. Um, we can see another spike here. And what this tells us is there's been an increase in interest in the stock or the, the commodity or whatever it may be. And it's trying to tell us that potentially either big institutions are trying to get in or there's been a big, big influx, influx of interest. So in this case for Apple, we can see that there was this big clump of buying and selling going on, and that indicated a bottom. And from there, we were able to go up really all the way to the peak. So there we can see that this change of interest um, and influx in volume actually indica indicated the bottom. Now, if we look a bit further along, we saw this big dip in volume, and then we saw another peak of selling. And that actually indicated the short-term top in this case here. So there what we're seeing is, okay, we've got our average, and we've seen a big burst of volume and a big burst of volume, both indicating the top and the bottom, or the bottom and the top. So that's something that we want to keep in mind. As we look at it, we'll have now a look at a different asset. So we'll have a look at Brent Oil. As we know, Brent was on this big run. And then again, what do we see? Okay, well, we'll put our support and resistance lines in just to get a bit of an understanding. And we've got our support and resistance. And here again, so what we've got is we've got this nice trend upwards. And again, this is on the weekly chart. Now, just remember guys, you can use this strategy or this uh, relative volume idea on any time frame. Of course, the longer the time frame, the more accurate it'll be. And the more indicative it'll be, but just to, as a lesson to you guys. So as we can see, we had this average of volume at about, we had this moving average around um, 18, uh, 200, sorry, about 300,000. And then again, we saw this peak, we break out this channel and we see this peak. And this candle or this bar right here, this volume bar is really important. Because it may, to that, to us, it can show that there's been a massive level of exhaustion and sellers are starting to um, get interested again. And as it, lo and behold, this little clump here indicated that we were at the top. And because it was such an explosive move of volume, indicated that we were at the top and we haven't reached that point since. Now we'll go to one more example, an Australian equity is called Stanmore Resources. And this again, shows um, how we can, how an increase in relative volume can indicate that a stock has now got an influx of interest. 
So if we have a look at this company, for a long time, it had just been basically trading in a range between one cent 74 cents, right? And in the prior year or so, it was 30 cents to 75 cents. And then what happened was probably they had a news announcement, which is often the cause of an influx of volume or something along those lines. And we saw a huge increase in volume. Prior to this point, we'd only averaged about around a million shares traded per day. On this day, we had 18 million. So that's 18 times relative volume. And although the price didn't necessarily, it gapped up quite high, it didn't end up um, exploding out of this gap here. Over time, we can see that the price has actually been able to break through multi-decade, uh, multi-year highs, and this is almost like a new company. So as this new funding comes in, there's a whole new level of interest, and it indicates that big players are starting to get involved and that stock may be interesting again. So guys, another way, um, a couple of tips when you are using relative volume is it's best to use it in conjunction with other indicators, and that can really optimize your trading strategy. Another thing that we can do is if we use it in conjunction with support and resistance. So if we have a look back at that oil, that Brent oil, um, if we have a look at Brent oil again, just bear with me, what we can see is that this top or this selling actually came in at a really significant area of um, resistance between about 125 to 145 dollars. So if we can then combine the relative volume with a strong resistance level, that's even more, it gives us even more accuracy when we're entering or exiting trades. So there you go, guys. A bit of a background on how to use relative volume and a shift in interest in an asset to hopefully optimize your trading strategy. Thanks for watching and good luck trading.